welcome to episode number 11 of the oh. Talking Para Podcast. This week we have Adam Martin, we have Maddie Tate from Tate Sports Cards, we've got Hayden from the Entertain House. It's gone back to the Entertain House, not the Golden Point House, Entertain House. And myself, Troy, from the Para K Podcast. This week on the show, we're going to talk about the win against Manly at Combank Stadium last Friday night. We're also going to preview the Indigenous round versus the Raiders down there at GIO Stadium in Canberra. Uh, and we're going to talk about our, some of some other interesting Indigenous uh, things about favourite players and whatever. But enough of me talking. Over to you, Adam. Yeah, wonderful. I have a game myself. Sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, Trey, obviously we'll start off with the well, it was a, definitely an entertaining victory at Bankwest. Sorry, Combank Stadium. I keep doing that. It's going to be Bankwest forever, isn't it? Or Parramatta Stadium to some traditionalists. But look, yeah, it was an entertaining win, certainly for the uh, neutral fan. Probably not for us who thought, here we go again. Um, look, obviously the score was 22-20. Parramatta coming away with a victory. Um, I'll touch on it first. It was obviously a pretty up and down performance. I think Manly got away with slowing the play of the ball down again this year. And just look to spread that ball and really kill our edges. So look, I'll I'll go to you, Matt, first for your thoughts on the game. Yeah, it was it was very uh, when I thought a script perfect script could be written. Guffo scoring first try, but it wasn't to be. But yeah, it was when we got into a bit of an arm wrestle there. I said to the manly guy in front of me, I'm like, this is going to go try for try, isn't it? And I think nearly every time we've played Manly over the last couple of years, other than the blowout scores, it's been try for try. And But yeah, I never thought that it would end like it did. Um, but yeah, as you said, it was our on week. So it was pretty, pretty good game. Even, even the Manly fans around me were saying that's probably the best game of the year they've seen. So it was pretty good. Yeah, wonderful, Troy. Your thoughts on Friday night's win? Yeah, well, I mean, it was good to see 18,000 people there in the driving rain on the Friday night. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, sort of – had sort of a bit of a semi-final feel, to be honest. Like, it was that intensity and um, obviously two arch rivals uh, playing each other. Uh, and f- for me, the player of the game was Mitchell Moses. Um, yes, he did kick that sideline goal right at the end, um, but I think his defence really stood up as well uh, this week. That cover tackle he did on Morgan Harper, I think, um, was like Steve Mortimer uh, back in the day. Um, just brought him down and took him over to touch. And, um, you know, for those that say that Mitchell goes missing sometimes or he doesn't didn't go missing on Friday night, I thought uh, Murata's return from injury was was a big performance. Um, and again, Matto stood up off, off the bench as well. Um, and it was, I said to Matt after the game, it was good to see that RCG and Junior didn't get taken off at the same time. Um, they sort of stretched that out a little bit. Um, so maybe they're listening to the podcast, maybe. BA, I don't know. Um, but yeah, there was certainly a few incidents in that game, wasn't there? There was the tackle from Kepi. Um, but I don't know how that high shot on RCG didn't get a penalty yeah. or on report. It was blatantly across the head. Um, and also early on in the game, I, I, you know, Andrew Davey from Manly, I don't know why he stayed on for an extra two, <laughs> three tackles uh, before they took him off for a HIA. Did he um, somehow uh, pass? And, and yeah, and again, slowing the game down, as you said. Uh, but, you yeah, know, a good performance. We could have... Uh, we're back in our shell, but we tried to keep on going with them and uh, never gave up until the 80th minute, which was great to see. Yeah, Hayden, you're obviously there as well. Your thoughts about Friday night? Yeah, I got there late. I missed the the first, I think, four minutes of this match. Unfortunately, couldn't drive down and, and public transport wasn't the kindest to me, but very good to be there for the victory. I'll tell you what, there's been so many games where uh, Mitchell Moses has had to kick a, a goal to win the game against Penrith last year, against the Cronulla Sharks in 2018. I guess you could chuck in there against the Rabbits in that semi-final where we had that momentum. So for it to happen, it really, really felt good. Um, I thought Reid Marnie was really good in this game. I think Reid 
He's been involved in games recently, but I thought it was one of his best games in a while, um, especially his defence was outstanding. Troy touched on it. Murata's return, I, I questioned um, whether he gets a starting spot in the side or for the bench, and I think that impact that he brings off the bench, kind of like that Madison vibe, was a lot. And honestly, I think Murata, for me, was probably my player of the game. Um yeah, really good to get the win. Uh, close grind out win. Troy's right about the semi final feel and a bit of good footy in the rain when I'm not uh, in the rain myself. So I was up in the nosebleeds with the, what do they call them? The blue and gold army. Oh, is it blue and gold army? What is it, Troy? The barracks. The barracks. The barracks. That's it. The blue and gold barracks. The swarm. The, the swarm. Yeah, the swarm. The drum. Yeah. All that. Um, but yeah, pretty good game of footy and great to get the win on our on week. On our on week, yeah. Interesting you mentioned that. We'll obviously go to some key moments throughout the game, but look, since everyone else has touched on their man of the match, I'll get yours, Matt, first of all, and then I'll come back to mine. Yeah, I'm going to say Will. I know it's cliche scoring the win and try, but I feel like there was bits in that game where he just carried the ball strong and a few of the tackles he made. Um, I know he got caught out in defence a couple of times, but that's what I feel like there was probably more points could have been leaked there, but a lot of his cover defense was pretty good and the scramble towards the end. Yeah, uh, my general thoughts of the game as well was, look, that first 20 minutes was very physical. Like, I was looking in front of us about eight minutes into the game, you had both Murata and Andrew Davey both standing there with their hands on the hip, gassed as. Um, you know, the forwards were just struggling big time to get into the game, so... Not getting in the game, they were in the game that much, so I was struggling to keep going. So it was probably a um, pretty smart plan, though, there by BA to go with four forwards on the bench. Um, we obviously saw some numbers down as well in those minutes. So I'm going to give a couple of honourable mentions off the bench in very limited minutes, but I thought Makatawa was excellent in 13 minutes played. And Oregon Kafusi, I thought that was one of his best games. Um, yeah. Well, definitely of the season, but even his career. Um, he only played 23 minutes, but eight runs for 78 metres. And it was just the strength of the post-contact metres as well he made. Um, a few of them when we really needed him as well. So I thought that was awesome. As you said, Murata was obviously solid on playing 29 minutes. Um, obviously, I don't know if he picked up an injury. They said something about he couldn't go on after the game, but he's been named again this week. So um, watching the press conference there. Um, and obviously, Reg and Junior as well. But, yeah, my men of the match, um, it's a toss-up here, but I'm going to give it a two. I can't split Papali here and Madison. I thought they were both excellent in their runs. Again, Madison just... Is there anything he can't do at the moment? He's played 65 minutes, started on the bench. Obviously, that late change there as well, Murata starting, but I thought he was superb. And it's funny you mentioned yours there, Troy Mitchell Moses. He didn't even poll in the Dally M's. I thought he was excellent. Yeah, it was very Is it because he got 10 minutes in the bit? Possibly, possibly. Yeah. It's a yeah. bit of a shit call there. Cause I was a week, a week early to that one. You're a week yeah. earlier, that one. Yeah, look, we'll get to those uh, bold predictions. I'll have to ask Scotty Sattler why he didn't uh, pick Mitchell for that one. But do you think Mitchell had a word to Hayes about scoring the tries a little bit in towards the post? <laughs> those kicks There's a couple of good ones, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, look, that's obviously the role there. 22 20. We'll go to some key moments. Um, look, the Mitchell Moses sin bin obviously was a, a big one. Um, I saw it live and I was just waiting for him to come back. I know there's a lot of people complaining because they played their advantage. Um, they finished out the rest of the set. But in my opinion, it still wasn't a bad result. Turbo scores under the post there untouched if Moses doesn't hold him back. We know that. They would have got six points. Instead, we only conceded four points when they were off. he was off the field. We won by two points. So Mitchell Moses may have won the game for us there as well, to be honest. So you don't know what could happen from there. It would have been a different game, but... Um, look, I don't think anyone really needs to touch on that one too much. It's pretty pretty clear cut. What I think right. the advantage rule was probably over. But, um, yeah, we'll go to the high shot, obviously, the, the tackle as well. Um, the spear tackle, once again, pretty obvious. It seems like the NRL has got a bit of an agenda based on spear tackles this year. Simbin send-off, I was happy with Simbin, obviously, with eight minutes ago. But it was a very, very similar tackle to, was it uh, Carl Lawton that got sent off yeah. for them two weeks ago? Yeah. It was Kempi, wasn't it? Yeah. The difference was if the power wasn't up at the top of his body, he would have gone straight on his head. Yeah. So it was actually probably, yeah, just as bad there. And as for the high shot that they're all whinging about, all the Manly fans, oh, it wasn't high, you fell. I'm going to take you back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take you back to Parramatta versus the Roosters last year. When did the high shot crack down start? What happened? Anyone want to give me the answer? Was that Matto? It was, was Murata. 
Murata. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, uh, and the who, infamous... who, if you could name one player from the Roosters that may slip into a tackle, who would it be, oh, Troy? Tedesco. James, Ted, James Tedesco. It started the crackdown. We started the crackdown because the, I know that game obviously had the Dylan Brown stupid knees in the back as well. The next week was Magic Round. We turn around, we saw what happened there. There was this and this flying everywhere. See you later. Um, it was actually probably the highlight of Magic Round, to be honest. It was pretty entertaining, <laughs> especially when your team still wins by 30. There's some bins and send offs going everywhere. But look, it was started the crackdown, and it all started because of a slip. Brad Arthur said it in his press conference. Um, he said, "Look, we've been on the back end of that, and we've had it go our way. At the end of the day, still make contact with his head, so I don't have no problem with it being a penalty." Yeah. Troy, do you want to touch on the next one? Obviously, you mentioned it for the red one. My opinion was that look, I, I didn't think Ben Cummins had a very good game either way. He missed a lot. He's you know just they were laying. I said they were laying on the ruck. There was so much crap he could have penalised both teams for. I don't think he had the balls to put the whistle to the mouth up for that one on Reg after just buying two penalties. That's my opinion, but yours? Yeah, well, it pretty much happened like sort of right in front of me because obviously Parramatta were running down towards my end, so I saw it pretty well. And um, you could see Reg was he, he got up after being hit. He was sort of like waiting and waiting and waiting a little bit for the referee to uh, blow his whistle because he was clearly hit in the head. Everyone saw it. 18,000 people saw it. Um, and I don't know how the – how I mean, we all complain about the bunker these days. I don't know how they didn't see it um, because it was clearly across his jaw. So that could have been a two-point uh, penalty goal to Parramatta. Yeah, that's when we were – I'm kind of glad it didn't because I think we scored two tackles later, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, it's well, one of those things. Yeah. Where, I know we wouldn't have had two, but, you know, like was I said – just a quick one. Was Ben Cummings even supposed to be our ref? I have no idea. I don't really I'm look pretty at the sure. Players. I'm pretty sure the ref that was supposed to ref our game got injured in warm up. Oh, really? Ben Cummings was the replacement. I don't quote really me on that, but. All week. Oh, we're going to quote you. Huh? We're going to quote you right there. We're going to keep all that week. right there now. We'll have to all get it back up to this. Yeah. This week. yeah. My, yeah, look, I said, I thought he had a pretty ordinary game. Gonna do it, but yeah, I thought the niggle sure. got to him a bit too much, but um, and he could probably couldn't handle the speed of the game to be honest as well. He's been around quite a while, so um, you know, he did one good thing. He what stopped the manly. He stopped the manly trainer for running underneath the post. I didn't see that. I think, well. I think Mitchell was taking a goal kick. Yeah, and he's standing <laughs> under the post, killing players. Yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, has anyone got anything else to touch on from, from that Just game? One, one quick turning point I want to say is there was two turning points for me that I felt like if it came off, we would have ran away with it, and that was Mitch. they done a switch play, broke Tommy Turbo's ankles. He went back the other way, slipped over. Mitch went to put the kick behind. There was no fullback there. We all know Mitch, he would have got there, but he kicked it straight into Schuster. And then mm. Schuster made that break. I feel like if that goes behind Schuster, Mitch would have scored. And then the other turning point was the seven tackle set that Mitch gave away from the bomb downfield a bit too far. Mm. And then they came up and scored from that. Well, I guess it's not a turning point, but I want to touch on just before half time. I think defensively, we were really, really good when Mitch was off the field. Manly had that opportunity to to put more points on before half time, and it really could have been a different game in regards to momentum. But I thought, um, I think Regan Campbell Gillard was off the field, but Junior Paulo was still on. But I thought defensively, we did a really good job to to hold him out. And in, in recent years, sometimes we we struggle to lead in those moments. Yeah, look, I'll, I'll touch on one turning point, Junior. We're doing it a bit. Um, Just Josh, a lot of turning stuff. points. Josh Schuster, if he stays on the field, I think Manly win the game. I think he changed the game when he came on for him. He went off. I think he went off with a calf injury or something, didn't he? Yeah. Um, he done that last year to us. He carved us last year. Oh, he just he's just some just having that wide ball playing option as well. That's why I know we see them. We say how good Maddo is at lock, but I love having Maddo out wide as well for that ball playing ability. Obviously, a completely different player. We know Schuster will most likely play at five eight for Manly next year with four and going the Gold Coast, but he's just a freakish kind of ability player, kind of like. A Felidi Mateo that's career's kind of going on and not stopping. So, anyway, um, 
as we mentioned earlier, or we haven't really mentioned it yet, we've spoken about it before, but Troy's obviously wearing the Parramatta Indigenous Round jersey. Do you want, do you want to stand up, Troy? Do you want to give us a twirl? There we go. Give us a, two, give us a full spin. There we go. Lovely male model, Troy Warner. <laughs> obviously, uh, this, this, this week is NRL Indigenous Round. Um, what we're going to do something here. I'm going to go to Matt first. We're going to name our favourite ever Indigenous player from any team, favourite ever Parramatta Eels Indigenous player. And our oh, favorite current many. favorite current NRL indigenous player. I'm throwing the NRL in there for you, so you can't say who you're gonna say. <laughs> anyway, so growing up, obviously back in the day, my favorite NRL slash eels indigenous player was Glenn Lydiard. And obviously, as the years went on, Dean Pay, but Probably my favourite all-time Eels Indigenous player was John Simon because to this day, he's still the guy that invented the torpedo bomb, in my opinion. So those bombs were ridiculous back then and then every other team picked them up. Um, but my favourite Indigenous player, have to say it, is GI. Favourite GI ever? Yeah. Yep, wonderful. All right, what about your favourite current – sorry, your favourite Parramatta one was John Simon, was it? You yeah. just throw them all into one. <laughs> yeah, no. No, Glenn Lydiard, John Glenn Simon. L- Glenn Lydiard and John Simon. There you go. So who's, who's your current favourite NRL then? My current favourite NRL would have to be Cobo. Yep, fair. Young, up and coming. All right. Yes. Aiden, you next. Can you try and not throw them all into one, please? Because it's just confusing <laughs> the absolute crap out of me. Yeah, <laughs> of, look, of all time uh, – Going way back, I love what he did uh, with his premiership wins. Arthur Beetson uh, would be that pick. Um, but then again, obviously being a little bit of a younger fella, I think Jonathan Thurston for me really left a, an imprint on what he bought, especially to those um, all-star games, wearing the jersey in those moments. Uh, for Parramatta, I don't know too many if I'm, I'm being honest, but I'll, I'll go Bevan French. I thought he really brought a lot to our side in the years that he was there. Um, and as for uh, current, probably probably Latrell Mitchell. I think he's out at the moment, but I think Latrell Mitchell, he brings a lot to the game, and when he brings on quite a lot of the Indigenous um, special moments, he, you know, the, the celebration at the Gold Coast, the way he led that, that performance, um, yeah, Latrell Mitchell. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, I'll start with the favourite Eels Indigenous player, and uh, I didn't get to see a lot of him play, so, uh, buddy, the champion of the game, Steve Eller, um, he's right up there, but um, I did see a lot of this person play, and uh, for me, PJ Marsh. Um, I used to play hooker myself back in the day, uh, but I just like the way that he just darted out a dummy half, and um, he really probably put his body on the line tackling-wise and really made an impact in that 2001 season. Um, special mentions to Dean Witters as well, current NRLW coach. Um, and, Maddie, I thought you might have said Tamana Tahu as well. So special mention to Tamana. There's too many. That's what I, I know, I know. Many. There is, there is. I had Hoffy, I had – I've got them all written down here. <laughs> yeah, there is. So um, – Favourite ever Indigenous player? Well, um, probably one that stood out in the late 80s, early 90s to the early 2000s, Laurie Daly. Um, I think he's coached the Indigenous team a couple of times, um, captain New South Wales, captain Australia as well, won premierships with Canberra, um, great in that 5-8 role. Favourite current Indigenous player um, is... uh, Special mention to Nico Hines, but uh, m- my one is actually, even though us Parramatta supporters didn't like Melbourne, or we still don't like Melbourne, he sort of made his name at Melbourne, and that was the Fox, Josh Adokar. Um, just when he can get into full flight down that wing, making those runs, um, it's pretty electric to see, and you know, he's a bit of an entertainer off the field as well. and um, Yeah, so probably Josh Adokar. That laugh, that laugh. <laughs> yeah, look, I'll um, I'll touch on the yeah, go my eels ones first. And as you kind of said, 
that's kind of the generation we come through. Not you, Troy, because you're older than us. We all know that. But thanks, man. Um, that's the <laughs> weekly mention of the fact that Troy's older than us. That's um, why I should have said Steve Ella, right? <laughs> well, yeah, and that's the thing. If I was sitting here talking about this with my dad, I know my dad would probably say Steve Ella. Um, but look, I'm gonna gonna mention some as well. And Tamana Tahu hated him at the Knights. Come to Parramatta, loved him. Left Parramatta, come back to Parramatta, loved him. Went to the Knights, hated him. So look. He was always there. He's an entertaining player. Um, remember him killing us when I was younger and kind of hated him for that. But coming through that generation, you got obviously Daniel Wagon, John Simon. It's kind of my first memories of football was those kinds of players. Um, so one I actually didn't know was Indigenous, but I've got it on my list is Mark Tukey. Apparently. So, Oops. Yeah. yeah, but look, um, yeah, I'm going to go with... What you touched on too, Troy, was PJ Marsh as well. Um, that 2001, like I said, I was, what, 10 years old. It's the impact he used to have off the bench as an impact player. Um, I actually met him a few times and he seems to be quite a decent bloke as well. So um, that's my favourite Parramatta one. Um, as for my favourite ever favorite ever NRL or favourite ever Indigenous player, um, look, Jonathan Thurston gets a mention. Um, freak of the game, unbelievable stuff, what he's done. The shots he took, the dog shots he took all over the years. Don't worry when you're younger, he put some in there as well. But um, And just kept going. And obviously, look, I think everyone in 2015, the Cowboys won the comp. Everyone was on him, weren't they? Just kind of for him. So, um, you know, what he done up there for that area, um, what he done for that team, and it was this special moment. Um, he's not going to get the award, though, because I had dinner with Scott Prince the other day. Um, and I think he's a very underrated player of the game. Um, and yeah, he gets my favorite ever NRL player there for that. Um, not just because I had dinner with him, I mean, the bloke just kept, kept, kept getting injured and kept coming back. Oh, yeah, um, him and the Cowboys were gone, yep, correct. And then went up with obviously took a risk and went up the Titans as well after being so successful. The Tigers, um, look, Benji gets the wraps for 2005, but Benji will say it himself, he couldn't have done it without Scott there. So, uh, massive mention to him. And as for my favorite, well. Hayden's already snaked it off me. It's probably a bit controversial. I know he cops all the heat. He's one of those blokes you love or hate, but it's Latrell Mitchell. And it's not just so much what he can do on the field. I know he's had his his incidents on the field as well, but he's one of those freakish players that can do anything, you know, just do anything, mate. Um, the bloke does a lot for obviously his community, um, you know, where he's from and stuff as well, not regularly goes back there. I see him doing a lot of stuff with grassroots football in a predominantly Indigenous area. And... One of the other things I love what he does is, and I know this, this could be a bit controversial because we know Adam Goods did it and look what happened to Adam Goods, but Luttrell's not afraid to stand up to racism. Um, obviously played football a lot of my life in an area, obviously playing with a lot of Indigenous, you know, mates as well, um, currently do as well. And, you know, I don't want to get too far into the racism conversation, but for Luttrell to have the balls for who he is to call it out is something I always respect him for because we've seen in Australia and we've seen in America how... It can kind of it can kind of ruin him, can't it? Look at Colin Kaepernick, it ruined his career yeah. over in the United States. So, um, and Adam Goods just copped the brunt of it for standing up what he believes in. So, full credit to Latrell. Look, he needs to get some of the shit out of his game. There's no doubt about that. But um, a freak of a player. So wonderful. Who picked, uh, who, who picked up the tabla the other night with dinner with Scott? With Scott, no, I already paid, mate. Oh, okay. I already paid. Nice. Randy at West. He was down for a touch football competition. I um. I gave him gave him advice on what food to get. The five hundred oh, okay. five hundred gram rattlesnake. Me and my mate were there having dinner, and he sat there next to us by himself. And he goes, "Oh, do you mind if I join you?" Yeah, no worries, mate. Great point. Yeah, one of the nicest blokes I've ever met. Actually, I just thought oh, he wasn't going to sit there and talk to us. And I'm sitting there eating away, and he's sitting on a single table next to us, and he just kept talking. I was like, "All right, well, now I don't feel awkward talking to you, do I?" So, anyway, I realised I shouldn't have done that on the uh, yeah video <laughs> recording. With it. That's this week's screw up. Um, all right, let's move on to this week's game. Um, who we got? I'm distracted now. Canberra, GIA Stadium, <laughs> Sunday, 4.05 p.m. Wonderful, Troy. Glad you're on the ball. I've distracted myself. Look, Canberra with a pretty impressive win last week. Over, um, <coughs> so I've got to have a cough. Over South, South Sydney. Sydney. <laughs> I, know, I knew how they play. I just couldn't get it out. I've got a chest infection at the moment. If you can't hear by my husky voice, I'm not trying to put it on for the podcast, but... Um, yeah, pretty impressive win over Canberra at Dubbo there. Sorry, Canberra over South Sydney at Dubbo. 
I think it's, we've got a game on our hands. They've hit a bit of form lately, Canberra, haven't they? They seem to have found their groove with halfback and former Parramatta Eels legend Jamal Fogarty returning, making his debut there for Canberra. Um, all around good bloke that, you know, sadly never got to pull on the Parramatta Eels jersey, but he's a legend of the game. Um, starting lineup. We'll go through that now. Look, Gutho stays there, fullback, obviously. Uh, Wonga returns to the wing. Bailey will touch on, stays on the wing. Um, Penasini, Opacek, Brown, Moses. Papali, he's starting at lock. Murata at second row. Lane at second row. Paul O'Mahony, Campbell Gillard. Uh, bench of Makatella, Madison, Kafusi, Brown, and 18th man, as usual. Hiding up the top there is Bryce Cartwright. Um, I'll go to you first, Matt. Your thoughts on the changes? Yeah, well, we were expecting Wanga any week now, so that's a surprise he went slotted straight back in there. So, obviously, he's ready to go. Um, we saw C- – I kind of had the suspicion maybe Sivo would get in there after the game he had last week, but we all saw in that game he was gassed to the max. So, he's got nine months' worth of lungs to rebuild and get footy fit. But, yeah, I like the changes – um, obviously, you've got to keep Maddo off the bench. Murata, strong runner. Um, but, yeah, I'm surprised with maybe I'm, – I'm a bit upset Hayes didn't get in there anywhere, even if it was only on the 14, because, like, Wang is coming back from that injury. He's had it in the past. He's fit as – he's probably the fittest he's been in ages other than – the start of the season, but yeah, he's ready to go. But I just feel like there should have been a backup option just in case because he might yeah. get gassed. Or and we've Xavier Savage, we've seen what he he done last week, so he'll be running, trying to run rings around us. So yeah, I just feel like maybe yeah, Russian Wanga back mightn't have been the best option, but. Obviously, it's a good option to have having all three injured wingers back now. So, yeah, when it rains, it pours. Look, yeah. it's not hard being it's not hard being a winger anyway. This hanging out with footballers, <laughs> but look, um, yeah, I'm the same as you. I, I would have liked to see Perham hold his bench spot or hold a bench spot. Um, as you said, he can kind of cover anywhere in the back line, can't he? If we need to be, we can obviously yeah. flip that around, um, kind of like Jacob Arthur can, um, and. Yeah, look, longer returning from that injury. Oh, 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 is going off. Professional, Sorry. professional. God, you're a professional night, Troy. You couldn't get your camera going. You're in the love shack. <laughs> oh, no. and yeah, your yeah. phone's going off. Wonderful. Well, that's the that's the uh, yeah, uh, behind the scenes good. of the Parakei podcast. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry it's guys, it's, 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 it's Heine. It's Brad. He's tuning into the live feed. <laughs> he's, he's gone. He's going to love my question. He's agreeing. He's agreeing what we're saying. He's agreeing. He's going to put. He's going yeah. to put Perham as fourteen. He's thinking maybe yeah, maybe Perham fourteen. Yeah. Perham fourteen. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Brad. Thanks for that. Yeah. Look, I think Sivo is obviously still a couple of weeks away as well. Uh, happy to see Wonga back. I think the Papa Lee he starting at lock is just because of the the size of Canberra's forward pack. Uh, try and get on top of him. Um, was it? Did he put a massive? Was it him that put the massive shot on Papalihi last year? The other Papalihi? Yeah, he oh, ran, yeah, ran out of him. Scored maybe a bit of up here as well. Um, look, without going into too much detail, I'm going to touch on it. Though I feel like Bailey only held his spot this week for the fact we're playing Canberra. Um, I'm not going to give any discredit to what he's done with his. He's obviously his attacking games improved. His runs out of trouble have been awesome, but defensively last week was terrible. Um, the rush up on Tom Trevojevic made him look like an under six player trying to tackle an under 15s player, his cousin in the backyard or something, just palmed him off. Um, and that's as honestly as truthful as I can be. I thought he got it out of his game, but it just seems to be something with Manly that do to us. So maybe we put a bit of faith in him. He's played well the last few weeks. But I feel like Brad in his press conference had hinted that straight away that one of Sivo or someone may be back. I didn't know if we we're going to see both wingers subbed out because. You know, like I said, it's, it might seem a bit harsh, but I just thought it was one of those games where he just – we're going to get defensively exposed. They're going to try it again this week in Canberra. Ricky Stewart's a smart enough coach to do it. So, um, Hayden, Troy, you got any thoughts on the team or any changes you'd make? Any, any Brad's just sent through to you, Troy? 
But no, he hasn't. He hasn't said any any changes. He said uh, it'd be one to thirteen, uh, one to seventeen. But <laughs> uh, nah, it's it's good to see Wonga Black back, Blake back, um, back on the wing. Uh, he was probably one of our form players uh, before he got injured, so um, it's good to see him back. In terms of uh, Perrin being on the f- fourteen, well, I think as you touched on it, he's gone. Brad's gone for the size factor of their forwards. Um, big bench as well for us. Um, I think if if Wonga goes down, we hope he doesn't. But if he does, I mean, Will could probably go to wing, and then maybe Murata could go into the into the centre, maybe something like that. But um, look, it's going to be a great game. Canberra are going for four wins in a row, so they've really hit some form. Um, Matty touched on it before. Xavier Savage, he's probably one to watch uh, from them um, at their fullback. The clash between the great mates, uh, Junior Paolo and uh, Josh Papali'i. Um, they mentioned on Matty Johns' show that they're great mates and they're, they're looking forward to that big clash. Um, yeah, look, last time, last time we played Canberra, it was at... Uh, 12-10 loss with that controversial Jordan Rapana uh, hip bump, you could say, whatever it was. Uh, it was a shoulder charge. Mike, he just missed. A shoulder charge of Mike Zubo. Um, but then the time before that was 35-10 victory against Canberra, down in Canberra, which I think broke a bit of a hoodoo for us. We haven't won down there in a long time. and um, yeah. So that will give them confidence again uh, to get the victory. So, now nah, it should be a good game. I, would, I just want to say I thought Makatoa had a good game against the Sharks earlier in the year, but I, I really don't think he's done enough to retain that that jersey 14. I think I agree with you boys in regards to Perham. I know we're going for that size factor, but you've got to put someone in there who can fill in positions. I think Murata, Troy mentioned it, can fill in some positions. I'm not a huge fan um, of this team, to be honest. I know the Papa Lee, he thinks the kind of mind games from last year, but I think Madison or, or Oregon Gafusi should be at lock for this one. Um, and Murata coming off the bench just like last week was huge. So, I, I mean, it's a good team. It's a solid lineup for the most part, but there's a few changes I'd make. Um, as for players to look out for, obviously, Josh Papali, he really hit a lot of form back in his milestone game. So, he'll be up for another big game at home. Um, and Hudson Young, he's been really, really good um, on that edge for the Raiders. So, we need to watch out and contain him. So they're my two players to look out for in this game. He really did miss the start of last week's game. That's the second time you've mentioned Murata off the bench and he started. So <laughs> he really did come in a few minutes late. Anyway, moving on. It's, a, it's late at night. It's currently 9.40 here on a Tuesday night because the ultra professional down here in the bottom left uh, couldn't get his uh, camera working. So, <laughs> yep. Anyway, even the best can get it wrong sometimes. Even, even the best can get it wrong. And Troy Warner, look, let's go. Let's go back to last week. Um, our score predictions. Let's go through our bowl predictions. We need to start doing this every week because I've gone pretty close this week, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, Adam's score was 38-10, which is nowhere near. Troy's score was 50-20, which was nowhere near. Hayden's score was 30 to 16, which is somehow the closest because Matt went 44 12. So, Matt, you get half a point for that. I'm oh, sorry, Hayden, you get half a point for that one. The rest of us, epic fail. First try scorer. I actually said Reg. Um, I put my money where my mouth is and had 10 on him, but I had 20 on Gutho. And then Gutho got the try distal out. Oh, mate, it was only $9, it was only 180 bucks. But anyway, that's life. Troy went Gutho, taken off him. Hayden yeah. went Tom up a check. He scored one. He scored one. So it gives you Half a, a point. Yep. Half Matt point. Ryan Madison. Um, obviously, they scored the first try. Then um, Hayes Perham scored the first try for us. So but let's get to our bowl predictions. Matt Gutho double. He would have been pretty confident with that. Uh, oh, yeah. Whenever he Three got the first in. one pretty early yeah. on. Yep. But it didn't happen. Troy Gutho hat trick. Well, if he didn't get a double, he didn't get a hat trick. So. <laughs> I did say 50 points. So. You did say 50 <laughs> points. Yeah, look, and Hayden, who had the lowest score of the night of 30 to 16, <laughs> went Moses to score 15 points. <laughs> 15 um, plus. Well, yeah, 15 yeah. plus points. What did, what did he score, six? Hey, that was an important six. He nailed that sideline conversion. But, look, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back here. 
I didn't get the moment right, but I said two Simbins in the game. I said Nathan Brown and Murray to power for a bit of Bufka, but I think they're both past it now, to be honest. Um, yeah. <laughs> to power didn't look like he wanted to fight anyone, which is very young. Him. And Brown and Brown was the same. So I think they need to get a bit of aggression back into their game, both of them, to be honest. But I said two Simbins, so do I get a point for that or what? Yeah, yeah. Half a point. That's, that's Half a point. I, I can't believe last last week I said Mitchell Moses will be sent off the field. Yeah, yeah. Well, One I had him out a serious calf injury and not playing. But anyway, yeah. all right. That brings us this week's bowl predictions. Who wants to go first? Anyone? Troy. Okay, well, look, I'll go first, and everyone's uh, oh, I sort of mentioned him again. Tonight, but uh, my bold prediction is Bailey Simonson to score a double against his old club. He's going to make mm. a statement against Canberra. So there you go. There's my bold prediction. Yep. Who's your first try scorer? I'll be doing that as well. Okay. Yeah, first try right, scorer. Yeah. <laughs> Will Pedersini after a tap back from Wonga Blake. Yep. Back on the score, and prediction. score prediction 28 14. There you go. Parramatta to win. Yeah. All right, I'll go mine. Seems I've written them down since 10 o'clock this morning. Oh, he's prepared. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm prepared, man. So, score prediction, 30 to 12. I've only ever got our team, like, the opposition scoring <laughs> yeah, 12, 12 every week. Um, first try scorer, obviously, coming back from injury. First game back, Wanga. Um, I think he'll have a pretty big game. And my bold prediction is Nathan Brown to score the last try, to be the last Ooh, try. That'll score. be tasty odds. Oh, yeah. Mm, tasty. Gamble responsibly. Yeah, yes, responsibly. I'll go. I'll go next. I've got very similar to Troy, uh, a close victory. I'm going to go a scoreline of 26 to 14, so the Eels by 12. First time he's gone a close victory and hasn't made it 13 plus. <laughs> I'm going to go with Matt's first try scorer stolen there. Wonga Blake is scoring first in Canberra. My bold prediction is that there will be no leader at half time. This game will be scores locked. I'm thinking 10 10, but no team to lead at half time. Wonderful. All right. Well, I'm going to go for us to have a blowout win. Um, look. I don't think we've been our best the last few weeks. Obviously, we had a you know, good win out at Penrith, but besides that, um, we went down to Canberra last year and really made a statement. I'm going to go us to win 38-6. to six. Um, My first try scorer against his old club, wait for it, Junior Paulo. He's due. We drew for four to score the first try. It's got to happen. How good was it seeing Wallace score for Buddy the Gold Coast on the weekend at $101? He's got to be due. We've gone with that big size in the four packs. So we're obviously going to try and hit him through the middle there. Um, yep, Junior Paulo, first try scorer. Gamble responsible and putting the house on it. Um, my bold prediction, and this is why I've gone for the buyout score line, and it would make me so happy if we are to drive down to Canberra, is for a Canberra player to be sent off. There you go. Ooh. We're going to see a send off this round. Look, I'll, um, I'll add to that. I'll add to that. I reckon it'll be Jordan Rapana. Oh, I'd love that to in, see that. He, that's he's got that in his game. Yeah, look, there's another player I'd like to mention, but I, I know the bloke and I know a lot of friends of his, and he could probably hurt me, so I'm not going to mention that. But um, <laughs> he's also capable of doing something stupid, have a brain snap moment. So, all right, that'll do us for the week. It's time for bed. It's, yeah, Troy's got us up at 9:45 on a school night, but anyway, <laughs> hopefully, see a few fans down there if we are to make the trek down. Hayden won't be because he hates us, but. No, nah, Nan's skydiving, mate. Nan's skydiving. Well, take it to Canberra to skydive. Just get the plane <laughs> and drop us off. We'll skydive out and land there. We're a bit screwed for the way home, but anyway. Like well, anyway thanks for listening, listeners, and uh, go para. Go para. Have a great week, guys. Yeah.